New developments today on a now infamous voting rights case from November 2008. In the middle of the presidential election, a cell phone camera and then a Fox News crew recorded two members of the new Black Panther Party, one brandishing a nightstick, intimidating voters and poll watchers at a Philadelphia polling place. The Department of Justice prosecuted, won, and then dismissed most of that case for what it called a lack of evidence. A DOJ lawyer turned whistleblower recently quit his job over that decision, giving us an exclusive interview where he said race and politics are driving DOJ decisions when it comes to enforcing the law. Today, the head of the new Black Panther Party weighed in on what happened on Election Day and what has happened since then. What I will say is that their actions on that day, or just in specific, Samir Shabazz's actions were outside of the organizational policy of how we are to conduct ourselves. And so it pretty much speaks for itself. Unfortunately, his actions at the polling station on that day were outside of organizational policy. So you don't stand by his behavior? Not on that specific day. Right. So you, you agree that it was really inappropriate for him to show up at a Philadelphia polling station with a billy club and intimidate voters and poll watchers? Well, this was one of the reasons why the charges against the new Black Panther Party were dropped, because we have been clear since early on that we do not support voter intimidation and that we should not be conducting ourselves that way at a polling station on Election Day. And so because the Justice Department looked at the new Black Panther Party position and my position and understood that these were merely the actions of a single individual on that day, this is why the charges against the new Black Panther Party were dropped. Well, but what about Jerry Jackson? He was standing right next to him. And also, there was witness testimony that he was intimidating people and stopping them from entering the polling station. I have received no such evidence, and Jerry Jackson was a registered poll worker. And well, whether he was or he wasn't, that, that doesn't excuse it. If it's true, as witnesses testified, that he was stopping people from entering and intimidating voters, no, that's not okay with you, is it? I find, I find no, I find that Jerry Jackson, I found no evidence that Jerry Jackson did anything wrong. Have you read One the testimony from the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights? Because they speak not only to King Samir Shabazz, but the witnesses spoke directly to Jerry Jackson as well. I, I mean, I'm not going to spend long on that. I find that Jerry Jackson had not violated organizational policy or any policy. Well, the biggest isn't that the point? Going, because uh, you, you say that neither men neither man was violating the policy of the new Black Panther Party. And yet, isn't it no, true? No, I did not say that. Okay, but I you, did not say that. Right, I said you, that one man violated the, the policy of the Panther Party. Okay. But isn't it true? And let me show you this. Isn't it this true, is Mr. One, Shabazz? This is one thing I have to clear up. Sure, go ahead. This is one thing I must clear up. In May of 2009, there has continuously been information put forth that King Samir, or Samir, was not prosecuted for this offense. The judgment was entered on behalf of the U.S. Justice Department and ratified by the judges in the United States District Court that entered an injunction for the prosecution of Samir Shabazz. Right. It, it's not so an, it an, an not prosecution. True. It's just, just to, uh, and I gave you that, you're, it, you're absolutely right. But, it is but the not issue true that people that take, Mr. Shabazz, the, the issue that it people is take. not true. Okay, I have it in my hand. I'll let you make your point. Now, let me make mine. The issue people take with that is that the Department of Justice had won an injunction barring Mr. Shabazz from appearing at any polling station anywhere uh, forever, more. And right. after they won that, they basically snatched defeat from the jaws of victory, went back in and said, never mind, we'll downgrade his injunction to he's only required to stay away from the Philadelphia polling station and only until 2012. So Mr. Shabazz is free to show up at the 2010 midterm elections anywhere in the country outside of Philly, and he's free to even go back to Philly after 2012. Well, you can split hairs if you want to on that. But it still remains true that it was right and correct for the Justice Department to drop the charges against the, the organization and the leadership of the new Black Panther Party. That is what we must understand today, that they were correct in dropping the charges against the organization 
and against the leadership. D didn't you order the new Black Panthers to go to the polling stations, sir? Didn't you order them to go saying they needed to, quote, stop angry whites and use, quote, all means at your disposal? Our intelligence indicated that prior to this election that there were serious threats against blacks who would be voting for what is now a black president. And so our mission was to stay 100 feet away from the polling place and to spread information about our political education classes and other good work we do in the community, as well as make sure that the police were not setting up roadblocks and stopping black people from voting. And we were successful for the most part in that mission. So but you we made admit no effort then, sir, that you sent the new Black Panthers out to the polling stations on November uh, 2nd, the election day 2008. They had your I blessing and they were instructed to, quote, stop racists and angry whites by using all means at their disposal. No, sir. No, ma'am. You're mischaracterizing what I well, said. Well, that's according to we Najee Muhammad, who's the national field marshal for the National Black Panthers Party. New, um, he is not affiliated with our organization. I am the official spokesman for the organization. We made a collective decision to participate in the political activity of our community. And as we do, we have the strict orders not to violate any laws. But and you, so any, you know, sir, that any individual member, listen to this, any individual member that violates organizational policy cannot be uh, attributed to the organization any more than any individual member of the Catholic Church. Every one of their acts could be charged to the Vatican. Okay. You just can't do it. Okay, but, but you know, sir, that those two gentlemen, and I use that term very loosely, uh, they intimidated voters at that Philadelphia polling station that day. Not just voters, but poll watchers as well. Well, I don't have any. The police showed up that day and made no arrest. I don't have statements from anyone saying they were intimidated. But be that as it may, we still do not condone the carrying of nightsticks at polling places, and we have been consistent on that since day one. Well, you and keep I think saying that. that. You, you keep saying that there that. hasn't been any testimony about intimidation. But I, I mean, the, the evidence doesn't support you, sir. And, and I'm going to call for a soundbite we have labeled as number two from poll watchers who were there that day. They told us not to come outside uh, because a black man is going to win this election no matter what. So as I came back outside to see, the nightstick turns around and he says, you know, we're tired of white supremacy. And uh, he starts tapping the nightstick in his hand, at which point I said, okay, we're not going to get in a fist fight here. And I called the police. What I saw, for example, was this guy, King Shabir Shabazz, who was, who was head of the, He's the, the one Black with Panther the Party. He's the one with the baton. And he said to me and to a man I was with, he said, now you will see what it means means to be ruled by the black man, Cracker. Do you reject that fact testimony? That's the first I've heard of that. And again, no one in our organization was instructed to do that or to speak like that at that location on that day. So they were the actions of an individual, not the organization. What about this King Samir will, Shabazz? He, he was the individual with the baton. And, you know, he was the one at the center of this case. And you point out that the Justice Department got a partial injunction against him. But uh, well, he, a, 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 he is still an affiliated with your organization, isn't he, sir? He served a suspension for his actions, and he has been reinstated as a member. Is he a but racist, let me say Dr. This. Is he a racist, Mr. Shabazz? Uh... I can't speak for him on that. I would say that the New Black Panther Party is not a hate group or a racist organization. Well, the head of the New Black Panther Party today alleged racism on the part of those questioning what happened in Philadelphia, November 2008, and those who have been following the DOJ investigation since. So we asked what he thought of the remarks by the guy with the nightstick. Right after the break, he'll react to this piece of tape. We keep begging white people for freedom. No wonder we're not free. Your enemy cannot make you free, fool. You want freedom? You're going to have to kill some crackers. You're going to have to kill some of their babies. 